Today, we're talking about apostolic mandate number seven. And what is that about? Uh, crown of thorns. Now, you, those who can see the video can see that there is a crown of thorns, the same crown of thorns that were likened into that which Jesus had placed upon his brow, upon his head. And then we also see that there's a crown that's made of gold and diamonds and jewelry, jewels of all kinds, uh, precious stones. So, you know, there's a purpose in the logos. There always is the images that we use in our backgrounds of the videos, as well as what we put out in print on the internet uh, through our mailers and through our postings. But this is something that you need to recognize that, you know, the crown of thorns is, is part of the persecution, yes, but it's also symbolic of the fact that that was part of dealing with thoughts, with your mind, will, and emotions, that you had to crucify your thoughts of this world in order to be able to let the spirit lead you through the spirit realm. And, you know, you can't walk in the flesh and the spirit at the same time. You are in the flesh. You can't get out of the flesh because you're in it until you're called home, <laughs> and then you'll shed the flesh. But right now, we need to learn the things of God so that we can walk in accordance with those things that he desires to do. We're going to get into this right now because we need to see some of the things the Lord's about to do. But before we do, I want to bring up a prophecy that came out I believe it was in yeah, April 26, 2020, uh, and it was in the, the grouping of prophecies that were in the prophecy with teeth, and this is on page four. Now the time for you to chime in. Now's the time for you to chime in. I will take care of your leader, but it's, it's, all, it's time for you to chime in, for you are very instrumental in the, my prophetic orchestra. Your voice will move heaven and earth to save the church, keeping you freedom, keeping your freedom from those who thirst for total power over you. Now step up, receive the powerful anointing today, for today is the beginning of the end for those who want to put you in chains, making you and your children's children slaves in their plan for domination over your nation. As I anointed the ones who changed the world in 1776, I now pour out from heaven above a new fragrance of my knowledge that will empower you to speak boldly. Your prayers will turn into prophecy. You will prophesy things that are impossible to manifest. However, without doubt in your heart, you will know that the prophetic words that cross your lips will destroy our enemies within our nation. Now, that was back in April 2020, you know, almost a year. Well, it was a year ago. In fact, this month's almost gone. This April's almost gone, 2021. It kind of amazes me how God can give something for one year and see it transpose and year after year and be fitting and be fitting what is going on in the circumstances of that hour. And this one isn't any different because you'll see how all this ties in in just a moment as we begin to go through the prophetic proclamation as well as the decrees, and then the mandate. And that's the process we've been going through for the purpose of being able to lay it down, make it so on earth as it has been declared in heaven. There's something about when you write out a pro prophetic proclamation or even a mandate. Decrees were in the Bible. Decrees have been used for thousands of years. And people may think, well, that's just, you know, man's law. Well, no, this is not man's law. That's an entirely different thing. That's for the society. But this is something spiritual, something very spiritual. Whatever you say is what you will, what you believe is what you'll speak. And what you speak is what you're going to expect. That's what's going to happen. So when we make these proclamations and these mandates, and we declare and decree these things to be as they are said. We're doing it in one accord. We're doing it in unity for the purpose of changing the circumstances at hand. We're not to fight with flesh and blood. We're not to do war with, our, with those type of things. We're to fight spiritually. And we know what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with just people or parties or groups of people or different nonprofit organizations that are doing things that we don't agree with. 
No, we're fighting the one entity of the whole mess, and that's Satan's kingdom. We're coming against the powers of darkness. We're coming against the principalities and powers of those who are ambassadors of Satan. We're coming against them how? Spiritually. And we're coming against them, against them with mandates. Now, you might think, well, when we mandate these things, that doesn't mean anything. Well, how is that going to hurt anybody? It's just a piece of paper or something written on the screen. Well, there's a lot more to it than you might think because you know that God has given us angels and has put them under our charge. When we mandate these things in one accord and we put these things out, we begin to declare and decree these, these particular issues. Angels will begin to move heaven and earth to make these things happen. In fact, we've seen a mass amount of change take place just since we started this. We're on number seven. That's seven weeks of being into the apostolic mandates. And we've been picking up momentum. I said from the very beginning, if we can get this down, if we can get this to the place to where we can move through this as fast as possible, we can turn this thing around by September. And that's what we need to do. We need to have it changed by September. Now you might think, well, why, do, why is September so important? Well, when we get there, you'll know. You'll understand why I'm saying that. But for right now, just be satisfied with that you have your marching orders handed down from the throne to us to declare and decree and make a mandate that will loose the angels of God into those dark places, into those places where there are things happening that are unspeakable, things that are so corrupt, it's just an abomination. It is hard to deal with what is happening, but yet we won't have to deal with it long if you just believe. If you speak with your tongue, confess with your tongue, and you speak out of the thoughts that came from God, those thoughts will be heard by the angelic host of God, and they will do what thus saith the Lord. So with that said, let's go into the prophetic proclamation for today. And it deals with the crucifix of the earthly crown. That's the crown of thorns. Our king, present day revelation, our king's present day revelation. Now you might wonder, what in the world is that? Well, these are things that he's speaking of today, and he's leading us into something that is going to be very eye-opening over the course of the next few weeks, starting with this. Do you still see me in my greatest day of sorrow? Hanging on the cross was just part of the cost I paid for your sins. If you still seek to find me hanging on the cross, I am not there. I am no longer the Lamb of God. I am the King of heaven and earth. I am the Lion of Judah, crowned to lead you through this life and to the other side of the veil. To fulfill my promise, I had to pay a greater price for your sins, those before as well as after being born again. In order to take back what was given away by Adam and Eve, I had to retrieve the keys to heaven and hell. Going into the bowels of the earth, I took back the keys of hell as I burned preaching to those in captivity. Now listen closely to what's written. Listen to the scriptures, and it'll begin to fill in the blanks of what your mind's saying right now. What does this mean? For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, bring, bring, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also we, he went and preached to the spirits in prison, 1 Peter 3 and 18. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many, Matthew 27, 51. Now, most people don't think too much about these two scriptures, but when you look at it and you understand what he's saying, you know that Jesus did more than just die on the cross. He paid a great price there, yes, no doubt, but many people were crucified. And people think, well, what's the big deal? There's a lot of people crucified. The difference is he went into the bowels of the earth and paid the ultimate price that you and I should have to pay, and that's to burn in hell for eternity. But he has redeemed us. He has set us free. He has made us a new creature. He has given us the spirit of his own, not the spirit of Adam and Eve, but the spirit of 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, G3D. He's given us that so that we will have not any accountability to those things that have been procured in the past, our sins of the past, or our sins in the future. Because we know we're going to mess up somewhere along the way. And many people think they lose their eternal salvation when they mess up. That's not true. You may have a price to pay in your salvation in this life. It may cost you in this life. You can go break the law, but you'll still be punished for it if you're caught. And you surely will be caught because you're one of the children of God. He's going to make sure you get caught. And this is the thing. People worry about that all the time. You need not worry. Jesus paid the price because he went into the bowels of the earth. You remember when Jesus came out from the first time when he resurrected and he came and he made himself known and to those around him. And they said, do not yet touch me for my body has not yet been glorified. They didn't even recognize him. It says they didn't know who it was, but it was Jesus. I'm sure he looked pretty hideous. And so he goes before the throne of God receives his eternal body, his new body, which you and I will do the same who believe. And as he came back, he not only had a, had a cookout on the beach and had, you know, uh, fish and honey and sat with the boys. He spent 40 days going about letting people know of his resurrection. Not only that, it says many came out of the graves. Who were those people? Those are the people who believed who he was, but died before he was resurrected. So they're resurrected. They came out of the graves going into the cities. Now, you know, a lot of those people had to know who they were. They had to recognize them. And as they saw them coming, they weren't zombies. They were people walking around just like Jesus was in their new body. Now, what did their new body look like? We don't know that. We assume it might look as human form, but we're not sure that. The only thing that gives us some evidence of that is that the disciples recognized him when he came back with his glorified body. They recognized as Jesus. Not only was it a body that he looked in human form, but he also still had the nail prints from the nails in his hands and his spear, the spear that went into his side, the holes were still there. So there was evidence of the fact that there is a lot of similarity, but in your glorified body, it knows no pain. It never dies. It, it's impossible for that to be corrupted because it's born of a, the, the second Adam, but the first Adam messed up. Adam and Eve gave it all away. So let's go to the decrees. I hope you understand what the proclamation is all about. He's setting us up for something here, and it might not be clear to you right now what it is, but it won't take very long for you to figure it out. In the decrees, we're going to see some things begin to transpire here that will give you some understanding and some things maybe you didn't know before. Let me get up there, get into it. Well, I keep looking up the wrong one. Hold on just a minute, people. I will get to it. All right, here we go. All right, declare and decree. Number one, we decree and declare to you, master of all things, unshakable, unshaken by what we see ahead of us. We totally trust you to guide us through the wilderness of desper desperation. Number two, decree and declare. Lord God, in the Holy Scriptures, you say we are to be the head, not the tail, the lender, not the borrower. However, we know not how to deal with such evil spirited rulers and lawless lawmakers. How can we trust their words or even their laws? We declare and decree you, you do care for your people, and you will show us how to get through these treacherous times decree and declare your crown of thorns has long since been removed from your brow and replaced with a crown of the finest of metals and stones of the highest order. Lead us, Jesus. We will follow your spirit wherever you desire to take us. It is written, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him, James 1 and 12. Now, the decrees have more to do with things that are about to take place, but also what they are is a recognition. It's also a um, confession of sorts, the fact that we're confessing that, Jesus, we no longer see you hanging on the cross. 
We see you as Lord of Lord and King of Kings. We see you ruling and reigning from your throne above. One of the problems we have in, in the masses in the churches is they believe that Jesus is going to come back to earth. And then that's when he'll sit on the throne. No, he's sitting on the throne right now. For Jesus said in John 14, 12, it's greater that I go to be with the father for the works that I did. You will do greater than I, because where did he go? He goes to sit at the right hand of the father of almighty to what to intercede for the church. What does that mean when he says intercede for the church to pray for the church? What does that mean? That's his directive. He's ordering from the throne of God, what we're to do on earth, but who is listening? Who is hearkening unto his word? Maybe you hear him, but how serious do you take it? I take it serious enough. I'm going to put it down on paper. I'm going to put it out there for everybody to read. I'm going to put it out there for you to hold on to because I will not be accountable for your bloodshed if I if I can, I can say I've warned you and if I've told you what's coming and you just you just totally disemboweled it just said well it's just not worth anything well then what happens happens unto you not on my account my calling came out of Ezekiel chapter thirty three chapter thirty three of Ezekiel and when you read that you realize there's a great severe cause of effect in there that will not be pretty if I don't do what God tells me to do. And if I do what God tells me to do and people don't heal me, as he says, they will not. Many people will not hear what I say. But when it happens, and it surely will, he says, they'll know they stood in the presence of a prophet. That's the call. That's my calling. That's my, my gifting comes from seeing and knowing what God's saying. But who is to know? You know, it's even the same situation we see even in the New Testament. Even in the Old Testament. How many times did the prophets come and tell the leaders of the synagogue or the church, what was coming, what to do. And they, they did the opposite thing. They didn't believe it. They didn't take heed to it. They didn't like what the prophets had to say. And that's not too much different today. You know, true prophets of God really don't have too much welcome, uh, welcome mats to look at when they go to a church. In fact, most pastors are scared to death to have a real prophet of God walk into their church. They're afraid they're going to spill the beans. I've had people actually run from me because they, they realize, wait a minute, you, you're going to see stuff in me that I don't want you to see. Well, I can't do it on my own. I can't read minds. I can only do what God shows me. I can only say what God tells me. And these things come directly from him. But I'm doing this in a format of a proclamation, decrees, and mandates, just like he's instructed me to. There's a reason why we're doing this. It's not just a a nice little game we're playing here. That's not what we're doing at all. We're actually doing something that's a lot more powerful than you realize, but you will realize it when you see it begin to manifest, when you see it start happening, when you recognize that these things that we were talking about, even in the prophecies we're pulling up from last year, you're starting to see, oh, now that makes a lot more sense. Now you see things now that were not really that clear or really, you know, maybe you kind of looked at it and didn't know if it Pass the smell test or not. It didn't really fit with the, what you could see. But the thing is, when it does start manifesting, then you start seeing it more and more clear and it starts making more sense. That's where we're at today. But there's a there's a great breakthrough that we're making today. And I'll talk to you more about it as we get through the process. But right now, I need to take you to the mandate because the mandate holds a lot of information for us today. Apostolic mandate number seven, crown of thorns. Our king is calling you to wear his anointed mantle. We must crucify any and all worldly thoughts by wearing a crown of thorns. Purge and sanctify our minds from removing, by removing all the thoughts of the world's ways, leaving a blank slate in our souls for Jesus to write upon. His ways and his thoughts will dictate our actions for the remainder of, of, of our years. Our honor will come as we are called to serve Jesus as hand of the king. Remember that. It's important. For those who choose to follow Jesus will be blessed with an anointed mantle. Many will experience his amazing power and various impartations each time the mantle covers their head while in prayer. Take your mantle. Strike the ground where you pray each day. And the voices of the world shall be silent by the voices that come from the throne room of God. That's some powerful stuff there, people. 
I don't know if you recognize that. I don't know if you feel the anointing on it, but it about brings tears to me. It is written. After these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately, I was in the, the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one set on the throne. And I'm trying to look and see what it is. It's sometimes my notes get too far away from me here. One set on the throne. And that one is capital O. That means it was Jesus sitting on the throne. So he looked up there and he saw the throne room, saw what was happening here. And he was receiving instruction from that throne. You know, most people look at the book of Revelation and think, well, you know, these are things that, that really did happen a long time ago. But yet the same principles still apply. Jesus is still ruling and reigning from his throne. The difference is, is that there's times he comes and makes his visitation known, and then there's long periods of time he's not. He doesn't do it by being seen. He does it for those who believe, those who believe without seeing. Remember what he said to Doubting Thomas? He said, you know, you, you, you want to know it's me? Look, put your fingers in my holes in my, in my hands. Put your hand in my side where they pierced me if you don't believe. And he said, oh, I believe, I believe. And he said, blessed are you for you believe, but blessed more are those who do never see me and believe. They shall receive a greater reward. I think that's very powerful for those who have never had a visitation of God, never had a visitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a very powerful thing. I know people say, well, I've asked God why I never see angels. And, and they said, well, you know, God said that didn't need to see angels, didn't need to see an angel because you, you have enough faith already. Well, I didn't have to see an angel to believe. I believed long before I see an angel, but the angels are sent forth to minister for us, for those who are heirs of salvation. So as we are heirs of salvation, we are in a position now where we can begin to order angels if, if, this is a big if, people, if we do it in accordance with the will of God, how he instrument is to be instrument it's to be done. We can't just sit there and declare angels to go do whatever we want. You have to have the order of the Lord. When we say in the name of Jesus, be healed, you know why you're healed? Not because you use the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus means you're speaking on the authority of Jesus. But if you didn't hear it from Jesus and Jesus didn't say it, nothing's going to happen. Not It's not a nothing. But if you hear Jesus say, do something or speak something and you do it, the angels are commanded to do that very thing. They are there to minister for us, but there must be that third communication in us. We have to hear his voice, however it comes, whether through a trumpet or through the rain or through the word or through however it comes to you, that small, still voice, through a thought, however it comes to you. With that, when it says your faith with the word mixed with faith works, well, that's true. Meaning, when you get the word, you have to have the faith to believe his word, not because you went and read the scripture and therefore you believe. No, it's because the word came to you and you believed it, even though you didn't see him. Maybe you didn't even feel it. Maybe you didn't have any anointing on it, but yet you know that was God because you've heard him over and over and over again. And you know his voice, you know his ways, you know his thoughts. And that's why it's so important to know his ways and his thoughts these days, because that's the key to knowing how to interpret what God means. And that's all important. It's enough to hear him. It's not enough to hear him. You got to hear him and know what he means. And that's what we're doing through these apostolic degrees and mandates and decrees and proclamations is we're making it known to you, not only you, but to all who view. There's some people right now that are going to watch this video later. There's people who are watching now who are with me, who have been with me all the way through it. And I commend you for it. I know God's going to reward you for it. But there's some who have not been watching these programs every week. They, they catch it at, at the video later on. That's fine if they couldn't make it today. But there's people who are going to watch it that have never seen anything like this before, and it's going to catch them. It's going to pull them in because they know it's the cry of one who knows what he's saying, one who's seen, one who's experienced it, one who walks in it. And then the greater part of it 
All these things that we're taking care of, we're speaking on earth as it's declared in heaven. Those things begin to manifest little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, until it's done. Until it's done. I can't wait for September, but we got a lot of work to do before we get to September. We got a lot of things to look forward to, but we got a lot of things to present before the heavens, before we can get to where we need to be. So with all that said, remember he said the mantle. He's talking about a mantle. I'm wearing a mantle today. Actually, this, is, this was a gift to, to Debbie uh, some couple of, I don't know, four or five years ago. And, it, you know, I was, we were trying to look because I, I found, okay, Lord, I know what I need to do now. I know what I'm supposed to do. You know, there's this lapel here, little lapel pin on here. It's the hand of the king. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, that's a Game of Thrones thing. Yeah, well, let me just say this. We only serve one king. And it's not a movie. It's not fictitious. It's not, this is real. What we're talking about is real. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And now you're shortly going to be one of the, one of the ones that is a hand of the King to be a hand of the King is something very special because whatever the Lord gives you to do, whatever G King Jesus says to do, and you do it, the heavens and earth have to move on your behalf. I'm talking about even demons will have to move out of your way. I'm talking about the angels will be, be running ahead of you, ready for you to speak, thus saith the Lord, and see those things come to pass in the name of Jesus. Now, you will see, as you wear your mantle, as you take it, just like he said in this decree, as he said in this mandate, you take this mantle and you strike the ground where you pray, it will stop the voices of the world. It will stop those things that would interfere with your time in prayer that you would begin to build that nucleus for God to begin to speak to you. As you wear it upon your head in prayer, it is a covering for the purpose of being sheltered in your closet. In fact, that's what it's actually speaking of when it talks about going to your closet and speak in private. It's, they didn't have closets back in those days, but they were talking about the shawl, the prayer shawl that they put over the head. You use this mantle for prayer shawl. You, there are scriptures that you're going to receive coming out Tuesday. Tuesday morning early, there's going to be a mailer come out, an email come out to you. Watch for it. It's talking about the mantle of God. It's talking about what we're moving into next, what we're getting ready for, what we're preparing to do. And you, one of these things that you'll recognize in this real quick is there's more in it than just one promise. There's more in it than just one gift. There's more in it than just one act of word. This thing is a, a process of release. It's a release of a new place to take you into that you're going to begin to walk on a whole new level. No longer shall you be just a servant of God. You'll be a hand of the King. You will walk in a place where you will become a friend, a trusted one that God can trust with many different things to do on his behalf, whether it be prophesy or whether it go do a particular thing, but know that God's getting us ready for something big. And like I said last week, we, we ended something last week. And I didn't even know what we were going into this week. And through the week, little by little, each day, God would begin to drop into my soul what it is that he wanted me to do and set, get set for you to walk into and you to begin to receive. What we're about to receive is something that will be with you the rest of your days. For that's what he said. When you, if you want a copy of today's proclamation, decrees, mandate and also the prophecy that was given out in april of 2020 just email me at prophet simpson at gmail prophet simpson at gmail.com i will gladly send them you just ask for number seven uh, apostolic mandate number seven you can just put number seven i'll know what you need and i will send it to you because you need to have this in hand i mean for serious you when you see the email that comes out tuesday you're going to know that you need to have this to put together with what comes out Tuesday. Tuesday's only for the true dedicated people who have died to Christ. I want, Lord, I'm going to walk on the things that you've called me to walk into. I haven't been wasting my time going through this school of prophetic knowledge. I hadn't been just wasting my time just trying to learn something. I've been equipped, equipped and commissioned and called forth to do things in the name of the Lord, to save the nation, to save the church, 
to preserve our life and preserve everyone in it. So be it in Jesus name, in Jesus name, because that's what he told me to say. He told me to write it. He told me to speak it. He told me to offer it. And you know, this is something that you'll find become very, very precious. I'm not saying you worship the, the mantle. You don't worship the clasp or the, the little medallion. You, no, that's not it. It's the honor of being able to carry that badge, the honor to be able to carry that mantle. I mean, you look at what Elijah and Elisha had in common, the passing of the mantle, the passing of the anointing. Do you realize that every time a, a spirited man or woman of God passes away, whether it be a Catherine Kuhlman or William Branham or whomever, that spirit does not leave with them. That angel is appointed to minister for them. Those angels that were ministered to point, ministered to point, appointed to minister for them, those angels are still looking for the ones that God wants to connect them with next. There's a continuance of that happening, the passing on, the passing on of the gifts, the passing on of the mantles. And there's still a lot of mantles laying around that have not been picked up. And I'm saying you're going to have the opportunity to pick up at least one pretty soon. And you'll see me probably every Sunday of each Sunday with a different mantle every week. And I'll have something there that, that represents what I'm wearing for that day. I don't even know what they are yet. I hadn't even gotten them. Yet. I hadn't even received them yet. But they'll be coming shortly. And I'll make yours available too. You'll see. You'll see. I'm going to give unto you something more than just cloth and metal. I'm going to give you something much more than that. I have something from the Lord to give, but I don't know what it is yet. It's like walking around with, with a serving tray, and I'm holding a tray, and I say, Lord, the tray is empty right now. What am I supposed to give? Who, who am I supposed to go serve? And he's saying, you'll know. You'll know when they come seeking what they want to drink from, what they want to take partake of, you will know, and I will put it on your tray, and you can serve it to them. You know what he's talking about, don't you? An impartation. He's talking about a prophecy. He's talking about serving you. I'm a friend of God, but I serve you. <laughs> I'm a servant unto his people. I'm a servant unto his ministers. I'm a servant unto all who will receive my Jesus, my King, my Lord. And I pray you do. I'll leave you today with those few things to think upon. But remember, if you're really, really interested, get a copy of today's message in the text format. Wednesday will come out, and there'll be a blog on our PMT blog, on our blog page, which is PMT blog, a little tab for that. You open that up, and there'll be the video, the, the podcast, and also all the text. But maybe you want to get your own original copy of this. Maybe you want your copy. I think you would. It doesn't cost you anything. I mean, I'm going to do it for you. I sometimes stay up late every night, just wait for people to write for, for them, and they write for them all week long because they get to watch the video. You understand? Because I don't care if you watched it live or whether you watched it through the recording. That's fine. I'm, ready, I'm willing to give all that I can because it's important to me to get this message out, and I need you to help me do the same. So help me with this. Copy it, paste it, put it in Facebook, send it on Telegram, send it on whatever whatever source that you use or whatever sources you use for media, put it out there. It's, it's good to do that because, you know, you're not going to be held accountable for it. I am, but you'll be rewarded for doing it. So be it. God bless you all to all a good day.